Welcome to the web mapping course. This is the introductory module of the web mapping course and in this module we're going to look at some of the requirements of the class. There will be a short quiz as part of this course. Here's what the course content is. There will be six required modules and the seventh module will be an optional module that you do not have to take. It depends upon your local instructor if they choose to do that module or not. So again, it's not really your choice as much as it is the instructor's choice if Module 7 will be covered or not. So Module 1 is the module that you're currently in and we're going to go through all the different parts of the course in detail where we sort of outlined them here on this slide. The future slides will give you a little bit more detail about each one of them. Here we're going to do a the creation of an ArcGIS server. An ArcGIS server is an Esri product and we're going to set up a server that we can serve out data to the rest of the community either to be used at the desktop level or to be used in a web mapping application. The third module is a web mapping module and we're going to look at the different content and different needs in web mapping. The fourth module we will work with ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Online is part of the suite when you buy ArcGIS Desktop you get an account to ArcGIS Online. It is a web GIS application. We're only going to use a very small part of it and that is the actual web mapping part of it. We're not going to use the analysis part of it. We're going to work with OpenStreetMap. OpenStreetMap is an open source piece of software and we're going to look at how you add data to OpenStreetMap, modify data that's on OpenStreetMap, and also how you change the cartography of OpenStreetMap. We're going to work with story maps and we're going to build story map applications as part of what we do here. And then we're going to use different types of story maps to build different applications. And the optional chapter is working with open source servers and open source cloud-based services and again we're going to talk a little bit more in the future but open source does not mean free open source means that you can actually get to the source code some open source softwares do cost money or it costs money to maintain the software through some type of a license agreement so do not believe that open source always means free a lot of open source is free but it does not necessarily always mean that it's free There's some assumptions that we make in this course that we assume that you can do certain things. We've bulleted some of these out and I'll talk a little bit about these. We assume that you've already used a GIS desktop application. That basically you can make maps. We are not going to cover in this module anything about making maps. But we're going to assume that you can make maps already before you enter this course. We assume that you understand Microsoft Windows file structure. We're going to continue to work in the Microsoft environment. Well, in open source software you can work in other operating system platforms, but for this course we're going to work only in the Microsoft operating platform. You understand what a projection is and you can do a projection of your map. Sometimes when you take your map from being a desktop map to being a web map, you have to use specific projections of the map. So you need to make sure you understand projections. That you understand basic cartography. That you understand how to make a map look correct. And what needs to be on a map and how to put this information on a map. So you need to understand basic cartography. Like when do you turn on labels, what color things are. All these type of things that you would do at the desktop level, you need to understand how to do that so that you can then use it in the server environment. You need to make sure that you have a server. A desktop machine will not do everything that's required for this class. You need to have a server. That server can be a physical server that is a box that you have the rights to, or it can be a virtual server that you have the rights to. We prefer virtual servers, but 
physical servers will do the same job but you may, need to have administrative rights to this server you need to have an ArcGIS online account and you need to have this in a way that you can make additions to ArcGIS if you are got multiple members of your class you need to have basically a class group of ArcGIS online so that people in your class can see what you're doing but some, in some ways it's protected from the outside world especially when we talk about using a relational database server and you must have a good broadband connectivity assuming that you're going to be working away from campus if you're only working on campus on this course then the college's broadband should be sufficient but if you're working away from campus you need to make sure you have a good solid broadband some other items that will be helpful to you but not required in this class will be some knowledge of open source software programming skills are useful but we will be doing a little bit of HTML XML code and some knowledge of how a server works and what IIS is Internet Information Services a Microsoft product that's in part of a server to know how these items work is helpful but not required as you can see on this slide the purpose the course is to provide knowledge on how you can interconnect items from the desktop to the server to the cloud to a web page that anybody can view so what we're trying to do here is create services that become web pages that anybody without signing in can actually use but we'll go beyond that where we'll also look at making web pages where they're secure web pages that you can also do actual editing on and not have to do all your editing just on a desktop machine so somebody that is just developing points do not need a full GIS package but to be able to do that just off a web interface can be a very useful tool we are going to look at open source software we're going to talk a lot about putting things in the cloud there are different types of clouds there's public clouds and private clouds there's commercial products and there's free products these will all be discussed within this course and the course has multiple levels of complexity we start from the simplest level at the assumptions that we assume that you already know so we start at that level of those assumptions and build more complexity as we go so each model starts with the more simplistic and builds in complexity there are times where there's multiple topics in a module that you don't need the complexity from the first topic necessary to do the second topic but in general it each module will be a building block from the beginning through the end of that module most of your assessment in this course is going to be products that you actually create there will be a few times where the assessment is not just a product that you create but in general it will be a product so what we're going to spend on the next several slides is talking about each of those main points that we covered in a previous slide so we're going to start with talking about the ArcGIS server a geoprocessing server is very very different than just a regular server from what it does we normally think of a server maybe containing data it may be a web server where you're actually sending out a web page I um, mean it may be locally housed it may be housed in the cloud where it's housed is really not important likewise an ArcGIS server could be a local server again these are not desktop machines it could be a local server it could be a server that is a virtual server but still part of your campus environment if you will or it could be someplace like in the Amazon cloud so it could be completely remote from away from your campus and things so the type of server we're looking at is a server that can do geoprocessing it understands if you will how to make a map so we're going to use the commercial product Esri ArcGIS server and we're going to place it on a Microsoft Windows server it can be multiple different versions of the operating system um, and you need to make sure that you have full administrative rights to this server so that you can manipulate items on the server 
you need to be able to connect to a storage array. A storage array is just where you might connect with a personal geodatabase, or it might be a set of shape files that you're connecting to. But we want to keep as much stuff off of the server as possible. The more things we put on the server, the slower the server runs. So we want to have a depository of information that we connect to, but that information need not be on the physical box of the ArcGIS server. You also need to have a relational database, the type of relational database that we're going to use um, for my discussions will be a SQL relational database. It could be SQL Express, it could be Oracle, it could be other um, items, but the one that we'll actually be showing at least that from our usage will be a SQL relational database. Now we're not going to teach you how to install that database. We'll assume that somebody in IT would have installed the database for you what we're going to do is show you how we connect to it from a geospatial situation and then how you use the data on that relational database. You want to be careful not to overload a relational database with too much information. Only information that is going to be changed should be on your relational database. All other information should be in your storage array. So a base layer of roads, you're not going to modify the roads, that should be on your storage array information that you're going to modify such as where people live that would be a file that would be on your relational database so there is a difference on what you put there we're going to use some geoprocessing services that you're going to use on your server we're going to assume that you have access to a desktop machine running some version of arc map and we need to understand that some data is only sent out so it's monodirectional it's just sent to the user like a base map and some data is bidirectional where because of an input that you put in just might be a checkbox that turns on a layer sends information back to your server to perform a operation of sending a stream of information to the user so we're going to spend some time with creating an ArcGIS server once we've created that server, we're going to then look at taking and making web application maps. So it's great that we have this internal GIS system where you get desktop users and you got data stored on servers and you got streams of information flowing. But one of the most important things in today's environment in geospatial technology is to be able to send that data out to anyone to be able to look at and they want to be able to look at the current information. We don't want to look at stale information, but in this world of big data, new information as it changes should be made available to the public as long as it's not confidential information. In this course, we're going to worry about doing two types of maps called silver light maps and flex maps. We have viewers that help you along the way so you don't need to really understand the underlying code underneath it, but we do have these um, viewers that we'll use to help us build maps. So we'll be doing those type of map builds, but we will also be doing some work with ArcGIS Online. This is again is an ASRI product. It is not free um, because you can have a free account or a trial account, but to actually get into it, you must have an account that gives you some editing rights and some longevity to it, but this is a way of getting information out to the real world while keeping <coughs> excuse me while keeping information that needs to be secure behind your own firewall. This also gives you the ability to make some very interesting maps. As I said before, you can also use it to do some data analysis work. But in our case, we're only going to worry about making maps for the public that can be viewed through a web browser. There are different types of st service streams that come off of ArcGIS server or comes out of ArcGIS online. There's map services which are services that cannot be edited by the user. You must go back to the desktop level or to the software level to edit those services. And there's feature class services which are editable but they must be connected through some type of relational database either within ArcGIS online or your own personal relational database or your institutional um, relational database. 
We also will work with doing field data collection. Obviously, if we're doing field data collection, we need to make sure that we have the ability to send data back and forth. In some organizations, that would not be an automatic map update. Other organizations, it would, depending upon one kind of data and what rights people have. In some organizations, you might have a middle ground here where somebody has to look at your data before it actually goes live. So we'll be looking at field data collection. We're going to be working with an open source map called OpenStreetMap. We're going to be doing a couple different things with OpenStreetMap. One is we're going to put information on OpenStreetMap. So if you think of OpenStreetMap as the Wikipedia of mapping, what we're going to do is be able to add points, roads, polygons to a map. And after we add that, it will come live that other people will be able to see it and actually use it. So we're actually changing a national world, actually more than a national, it's a worldwide map that we're actually changing and creating um, content for. So we'll be working with OpenStreetMap. We also will be looking at how you can use OpenStreetMap in like your own web application as your base map, and you can change the cartography of that using a product called Mapbox Studio. There are other products that do this, um, but we're going to be using Mapbox Studio as our product. And OpenStreetMap, I think, is a good base layer for a lot of maps. And we will be doing some minor code modification in here, but we'll show you what you need to do as we go through this part. We're going to work with building story maps. Story maps are very, very important. And the purpose of a story map is to tell a story with pictures, locations, maps. It's basically a way of telling a story about place or in time which combines imagery, writing, and mapping all together into one product. And so we're going to use three different story maps. We're going to use the Esri story maps. We're going to use a Google story map. And we're going to use one from Knight's Lab. So there will be three different story maps that we will work with in this course. Open source is becoming extremely important. Again, we got to be careful to remember open source does not necessarily mean it's free. Instead, the source code is there. There are open source desktops that you can use, both that are installed and also in the cloud. And there's several that are very, very good. A lot of the open source information comes to you free to use, but you might get advertisement or they might charge you for using more storage than the minimum storage that they have. Usually to get started the storage amounts are pretty good though. So we're going to look at some open source um, items and that can do a similar type of job. Again the section here on open source is not required and it's up to your local instructor if they're going to use it. Just a little bit more expansion there. One of the nice things of open source it runs on multiple operating systems such as Linux or the Apple operating system. So that's an advantage because we know that Esri products right now only run on Windows based machines. Some of the times when you work with open source you're going to need to understand a little bit about programming because you're actually going to be having to change some code. It might be Python, it might be XML, it might be CSS you need to learn a little bit about code. Usually it's not an extensive amount of code that you need to learn, but I learn a little bit. One of the disadvantages is sometimes in open source you don't have that support system that you have in a commercial product. So you must be aware of that. Sometimes to keep code small, what is done is that in open source software you get the skeleton and then you take that skeleton, you can add plugins into that skeleton to do specific tasks. So it loads very, very quickly a lot of times, but you don't have a lot of extra baggage there. But it doesn't have all the functionality initially that you might need. And you have to go out and find a plug-in here or there that could be wrote by multiple people. That's sometimes a disadvantage. It's also sometimes a big advantage because you can find people who've wrote exactly what you need to do and not have extra code that you might not need. So again, open source is a coming revolution. And we've put it in the course. And again, it is an optional piece of the course depending upon your instructor. So the basis focused on this course is going to be 
web creation. Things that can go on the web, a lot of what we're going to have that's going to go on the web is going to be stuff that's available to anybody. No sign-ins required. You can see data. So just a very simple situation. Someone goes out and takes field data for where historical markers are located. They upload that data from their field data collection on a smartphone. They took a picture of the marker. They entered some information about the marker. It is uploaded to a server. That server then sends it back to a database that might is behind a secure firewall. Someone else who is right now loading a web map onto a browser, that specific web map for historical markers, immediately sees that update as soon as they refresh their screen. So we're going to learn how to make this functionality from field data collection into actual web application mapping and how that all works. It is assumed that the learner can make appropriate maps, that you understand a little bit about map making that you would have learned in like an introduction to geospatial technologies course. So we assume that you have that knowledge and we will not talk about how to build maps because we assume that you already can build maps. Now if we go outside the, what we think is an introductory knowledge of map construction, we will bring that up and show how those are done. But when you, we're talking about just building a basic map from scratch, we assume you know how to do that. In this particular module, we have a quiz. The quiz serves multiple purposes. Lots of institutions require some type of short quiz just to make sure that somebody has access to software and can be online. Now this course could be offered online or in person. It doesn't really matter. Our hybrid course of some combination of both online and in person. But we want to have just a very, very basic quiz. It's sort of an open book quiz, even though there's not a book for this course, where you can use the slide deck that you're looking at here and answer a series of 10 questions about what you've been told in this introductory module. Uh, there might be more than one correct answer. This is meant to be constructive criticism for the student. It's not as much worried about the grade as much as it is, okay, here's some information that um, we've mentioned. It appears that you misinterpreted some of what we said, and we're going to go into a little bit more depth as an instructor to help you be ready to start in Module 2. So once you've completed the quiz, go to Module 2 and begin building an ArcGIS server.